here from Bloom Audio. Today we're going to talk about the AK-01 from Astell & Kern. Now, Astell & Kern is a brand known for primarily their digital audio players, but specifically in that for their really incredible build quality and designs. So they've dipped their toes into the IEM waters a couple times with collaborations with Jerry Harvey Audio, and more recently, Campfire Audio with the AK Solaris X. So this is their first 100% in-house developed IEM, and it's definitely a big jump into the deep end uh, with a three-driver uh, hybrid design, uh, and it comes in at a surprisingly low $699. So, of course, the question is, uh, was their jump into the, the deep end a uh, belly flop, or was it a smoothly executed dive? Let's take a closer look and find out. So Astell and Kern gives you a nice presentation on the package here. The box is similar to the uh, AK Solaris X. If you had that, you slide this out. Get a you know nice presentation here. All your information, cards, and manuals are right there. So you can pop these out carefully. Uh, you know, the cables under here. The cable is, you know, really quality. Uh, they've also are sitting, you know, are selling this cable separately. Uh, but it's a really nice, uh, I believe it's a silver plated copper design there. So once you get the IEMs, I always take a closer look at the IEMs real quick. So, yeah, this again, the, the curves on this definitely remind you the angles of an Astell and Kern digital audio player. Uh, very nice build and design there. So you open this up and you get a case. It's like a leather wrapped case. Um, it kind of closes on its own, which is cool. Plush interior. Uh, you know, Astral and Kern. Very nice, convenient design. Now my one complaint about the packaging here, it's really hard to get the ear tips out. Uh, you know, it's just a minor thing. Uh, but I ended up like shaking them out and dumping them out like this. Got about half of them out. But anyway, yeah, so a great, great presentation and package all together um, in that. But yeah, so looking closer at the IEMs themselves. Uh, so these were made in Japan. It adds a little bit of a, you know, feeling of a premium design there with that. Um, it's aluminum housing. You know, seems fairly scratch resistant and all of that. So the nozzle design is a little bit on the thick side, um, which can, and it's a little bit long. It's an interesting design here. So I did have a little bit of some issues getting the fit at first, but experimenting with ear tips and all of that helped me get that straightened out and get a good secure fit. Um, cable has a great look and feel. Um, honestly, it feels like some cables that you might spend the $6.99 just on the cable almost. Um, it is, it's a silver plated, uh, OFC oxygen free copper. Um, and, uh, yeah, the MMCX connectors I thought were really nice as well. They were just in the sweet spot of having a good firmness, but not being too hard to remove, uh, and, or put back in. So, uh, overall is a various luxurious. I look and feel for the price and great product. In terms of the sound, AK-01 definitely fits in with the Astell and Kern pedigree of the way they tune their daps, where you kind of start with a more reference type sound, but you make small tweaks, not big exaggerations, to create a higher level of engagement and a little bit of excitement with a more musical delivery uh, to the tuning. So AK-01 here does this with a little bit of emphasis in the bass, you know, some smoothness in the treble, a little bit of a pullback in the mids, I think. And it really executes this well. It shows, I guess, all you 
years of experience in tuning DAPs can also apply in how you tune an IEM. So it gets its sound from four drivers. There's two balanced armature, a planar magnetic, and a dynamic driver. The dynamic driver is a 5.6 millimeter, which is on the small side uh, with a lot of IEMs, you know, hybrid IEMs having eight or nine, even 10 millimeter dynamic drivers. Uh, but what it does, it really gives you this fast, tight bass performance that in a lot of ways feels like a balance between a dynamic and a balanced armature sound, where it feels faster and tighter, better controlled than a lot of hybrid IBMs, especially in the under $1,000 range. But at the same time, you still get that impact and timbre that you're expecting from a dynamic driver that it sort of provides to an IEM. So you get this almost balanced armature like speed with still that physical punch and natural tonality of a dynamic driver. So they do a really good job there with the smaller dynamic driver. As you move into the mids uh, with the balanced armatures, again, the mids are good. There's good detail. Uh, the construction is good without you know any kind of bleed. Uh, there's good separation in the mids as well. Uh, not particularly notable. I feel the mids are maybe slightly pulled back. You can hear that in certain vocal performances where it just feels a little bit behind the rest of the band uh, in, in the image. So as you move into the treble, again, I think that's another highlight here where the planar magnetic driver feels like the sort of resolution that you get in an over-ear planar magnetic headphone. Uh, it's got that speed and just that sense of the, the attack, the decay, all of that is really well executed with things like you know, crash cymbals or with violins, you get that bow sense of, of, a, of a bowed instrument and other things uh, that again, like I said, remind you of a high-end planar magnetic headphone. Now, in terms of the sound stage, the sound stage is kind of typical IEM. It's not particularly large. Uh, you know, it's it's well done, rounded. You do feel, um, you know, it's not just off to the sides. You feel it in, in front of you as well. Um, the imaging, I think, due to the strong separation, the imaging feels really strong, especially at the price point. Uh, because everything is well separated, it's very easy to sort of, you know, with the psychoacoustics place the various instruments and performers on the stage, even if the stage isn't particularly large. In terms of comparisons uh, with the AK-01 balancing the sort of neutrality with a, a little bit of a sweet musical tuning, I really felt like I needed to bring the, the Campfire Andromeda into the discussion. Uh, in addition, it shares a price point with the final B1, which I also think is a pretty strong performer in this price point. So um, yeah, I thought, I thought those were two, two good ones to get an idea of what Astell and Kern is doing here. So compared with the Andromeda, which is you know priced at 1099, so a bit more expensive, I wouldn't expect the, the AK-01 to outperform it, but I do think it comes close in some aspects. Now, Andromeda has a, a larger, better constructed soundstage, generally feels more three-dimensional, uh, but given the space, I think AK-01 is very close in terms of the imaging, the positioning, and all of that, just on a smaller scale. The base in the Zero One has a stronger impact and you get a little bit of a more natural texture to the base in the AK-01 than with Andromeda's balanced armature base. Uh, but then as you go into the mids, that's where Andromeda really pulls away where you do get that balance, the detail, the separation, and all of those other things that AK-01 does well, but they're just better constructed with the vocals and the, the 
the feeling of balance between different instruments and other things that Andromeda's mids just feel a little bit stronger, a little thicker, more detailed. And it's per especially with vocals, Andromeda does a better job presenting the vocals. Uh, as you move into the treble, again, uh, really strong resolution here with the planar magnetic driver for the treble. Andromeda kind of just barely pulls ahead in that one. Um, just having a little bit better resolution there. Now, pulling it back down to the 699 price point, the final B1 kind of flips the script on this comparison a little bit, where B1 has a more of a wide mid range, mid bass boost. Uh, so it's got more slam, but it's not as tight and fast as Zero One's bass. And they both kind of have similar bass extension as well. A zero one now, where Andromeda's mids were, I think, better than zero ones. Zero ones mids are, are stronger than B ones, where the B one has just a touch of bleed in from the bass, and zero one is a lot cleaner there. In the treble, there's this sense of a little bit of extra air in the B1. Uh, that, that is nice, but I think overall in the treble extension and the resolution, zero one's a little stronger there. So I think I think zero one compares very well with its peers in terms in that price block, but it also is stretching up and compares pretty nicely with some more expensive IEMs as well. Ashton and Kern's years of experience uh, with digital audio players uh, and the collaborations they've done with some really big names and IEMs has definitely helped them a lot in the design process for the AK-01. What's surprising about it to me is how much IEM you end up getting for the price. So with Zero One, you're getting uh, a really great design, really high build quality, um, great tuning and performance, and you're getting that with a really big bang for your buck in the process. And I think that makes the AK-01 a real standout IEM. Thanks for watching. You check out the AK-01 and a lot of other great products at bloomaudio.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be back soon with more hi-fi personal audio content.